It's just past half past six. It's the start of January. And this is a day in the life of a bee farmer. Hello, I'm Griff Reese. Welcome to Gwenny Griffith. Here we dug everything beekeeping farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now, this is the first video in the day of a life. We're going to do a day in the life of every month within the year to try and give you guys a better picture of what a UK bee farmer gets up to uh, within the working day and basically share their day with you. Now, my day is slightly different. I've got these two boys. They've just had food and I'm going to take them to school uh, for roughly 10 plus 8 but first uh, I need to go check the sheep, the sheep are lambing or they're just coming to an end of lambing now. Uh, we'll go out there, check the sheep and then get these kids to school so we can start the full beekeeping day. Something quite nice about being outside in the dark before everything starts for the day, just me and the dogs. They sleep in the house and I let them out this time of day and they come up with me to do the sheep. And ready this year <laughs> than normally. <laughs> but if you watch my lambing videos, it's roughly <laughs> the same. We've got, you know, you well, you can see we've got the, the ring feeder <laughs> there. <laughs> Sheep with the lambs. In there, we've got <laughs> creep feeder <laughs> for the lambs. <laughs> Basically, that's all I'm doing. I'm walking around the shed, <coughs> making sure <coughs> nothing has just lambed or is in the middle <coughs> of lambing. Make sure everything's looking right, <coughs> which it is. And basically, that's it. The hay feeder, or the, the big bale feeder, is pretty full, still three quarter full. So that doesn't need changing. What uh, <laughs> needs topping up, and then <laughs> that's that for today. Some mornings, if the bale is down, I'm gonna start the tractor, get a new, get a new bale in there. But today, it's pretty good. So what's here? Go ahead and come and sit in the canoe. In. So, first stop of the day, just drop the kids off. It is roughly half past eight, and uh, it's been pretty windy the last few days. And this site is one of the most uh, exposed sites I've got. Uh, it's got a history of lids flying off, so I thought, let's check the site. Not doing any bee work, I haven't got the suit or anything with me. But I just wanted to make sure that the lids are on. It's always a big concern when we get big winds and storms. Looking pretty good. Right, back to base. Okay, this guy is exercising like this, I'm gonna do it. This guy's got this kind of personality with girls, okay, I'm gonna imitate that. And obviously by like copying and imitating. Well, back in base and in the shop. Now the first thing I gotta do before I pack orders, we had a, a big delivery in. Um, they've already, the highs and everything being put on the shelves. Some manly frames there, that's going in the back shed and these two pallets of nukes, 100 nukes there and this is the nuke box we're going to be selling our bees in this year. 
So plenty of ventilation. And this wood. Now we were selling nukes in polystyrene highs, but just the cost of everything has gone so much that putting the bees in the poly hive was, was making the nuke too expensive. And I didn't want to sell nukes in uh, a plastic Corex box because I think that just looks rubbish. The Corex is just like a single use plastic. You're not going to get that much use out of it. It's going to be of no value to the beekeeper in a few years because it's just broken down to nothing. And you know, we're trying to get away from the single use plastic stuff. And I thought this type of nuke, uh, good wood and plywood nuke. The beekeepers, whoever's buying the news, they can paint that down and I bet you that there is going to be a box for life. So they can go out, catch swarms, that is going to be a perfect box for them. So I just think that is better value for money and it's a better product. And you know, when you look at stuff, when, you, when you're selling honey, you want the labeling, the jar, everything to look really good. And I think it's the same when you're selling nukes. A nuke in a box like that looks much better than the nukes in a plastic Corex box. That's my thinking, I'm not saying that is 100% true, that's just how I look at it. I just think that's a lot more sustainable, better for the environment and everything. But i tell you one thing quick before I pile wrap these up and move these into the back shed. How more expensive everything has gone. Now we had four pallets like this, different hives, uh, frames, you know, all, all these was, was full of bits as well. And basically that was £10,000 worth of stock uh, at trade for us to stock the shop with. And that's just one supplier. Um, you know, that's just how expensive everything's gone. Where before, you know, I remember thinking years ago, I'd like to set up a beekeeping shop, I'll get a £1,000 and I'll buy loads of stuff and sell it. £1,000 this day and age now in beekeeping is nothing. Um, I'm sure you, whichever industry you guys are working in, um, it's the same, it's just everything has gone absolutely um, through the roof with inflation, the war in Ukraine and everything. It's knocked the prices up sky high and as a business, that's one of the biggest challenges we've got at the minute now. Getting stock in, uh, managing cash flow because serious chunks of money goes out now to buy stock. And everybody wants you to buy stock at the same time. So everybody's chasing you, oh, when do you want to buy this? When do you want this? When do you want that? Well, you've, we've got as a small business, you know, spread that cost out we can't just get everything in one hit uh, that's just too much cost we've got to you know trickle the the material in or trickle the items into stock hold them here and then we, we can sell them that's probably one of the biggest challenges at the minute and quickly one of my favorite frames these are made by thorns manly frames My favorite frames for supers. So that's that. I'll get these out of here, make some room, and we're gonna pack some orders. One of the best things I bought is this. If you ask any bee farmer, farmer, someone who runs a shop, you can never get enough storage spaces. Every shed is just full. Because you've got all the pallet loads and stuff all the time. Even for the honey farm, if you want feeds, they come on pallets. If you want hives, it comes on pallets. You know, you can't just buy things individually. It's pallet loads or nothing. And it's starting to go with farming. They want to send you Arctic or lorry loads instead of pallet loads. Um, you know, that's the kind of stage everybody's at with trying to keep costs down. Because it's, it's nobody's fault really, it's just a lot of these global things happen at the same time and just boom. Inflation goes up, the price of everything goes up. 
and um, for those guys who haven't increased their honey prices for this year you're gonna get uh, a big shock of how far your money actually goes because it's, it's not gonna go far enough from the cost of the feed to the hives to everything within beekeeping um, that's really gonna knock people's um, top end on, on profits and turnover with that there's just so much of that is gonna come out uh, to buy stuff in the office the boss fleer and then Harad is printing orders off for me and then she writes on these labels can't show the details behind us that's people's addresses but that's how I know what to pack so we're going to take these so throughout the morning what my job is back and forth back and forth into here picking these up So what I do, I pack the orders into the wheelbarrow, get a full load, and I'll take you to the shed where we put the parcels for the curry to pick up. Now I'm just sorting out some swanty hive orders in the meantime. Come up here. It's amazing what storage space you need. Cardboard boxes. And you know, you just, like anything, you just can't buy a box. You gotta take like a pallet, half a pallet load. So in here we've got some extra stuff, we've got Thomas suits, we've got dead and smokers, swanty suits, swanty hive parts, more swanty stuff. I tell you, it's probably impossible to sell beehives without being a beekeeper. Because you just look at all these bits and you've got to work out, right, someone's ordered a hive. I need eight of them, four of them, one of them, ten of those, you know, to make that hive complete. It's, it's a good thing I'm a beekeeper before I started keeping, uh, well, before I started selling hive products. Uh, makes the job a lot, lot easier. Now I'm just getting ten hives sorted, twenty hives. You'll see by the end how much bits that is. And with the storage, you've got to store some stuff up there and some stuff down here. So if I take you down here. Foundation, supers, timber stuff. Frames, thorns, hives. Some swanky stuff there. This tends to be swanky area where I keep a lot of the bits. One nose and everything, the, the mess for the floor. And then right down here, I've actually got a, a video, click the link there to watch that video of um, a tour of the shop where we just keep some of the stuff around here, which just makes packing stuff a lot easier and making stuff easy to find is the big thing, especially since we're not kitted out like a big warehouse. This shed is for multiple use. We do training in here, we pack orders in here, and we store most of the stuff in here as well. It's very hard juggling all that in one space. So with the courier stuff, we pack everything here, and I'll take you out in a minute where we put the boxes. And with the Royal Mail, we've got this system here. We've got a crate, and we put bags in, and we'll fill this, hopefully, with mainly honey and small things tends to go with royal mail so we'll fill that up and at the end of the day royal mail comes here dappers three we'll take the bag out to where i'm going to show you and they'll collect there so couriers and royal mail collect here every day just because we've got stuff to go out every day whether it's beekeeping equipment or honey now if you've ever ordered anything with this and you notice there's recycled cardboard in the boxes well we've got a special machine here that does that and uh, Harad will demonstrate it now. Harad likes to take most of the plastic tape off. Well, I try to remove as much as I can. I can't guarantee every bit will be off, but uh, 
most of it. And then that's the machine. So we bought that second hand. And it does a really good job of making sheets of cardboard into usable uh, packaging. So to show you the, the the complex of assembling hives to ship out, so there's ten twenty hives here. So to make a full set, we need one floor, one mesh, one tray, one clear crown board, one queen of Suda, one roof. And I've stacked these in. So we've got the brood box on the bottom. So there's four sections of that. Then we've got two supers. So there's eight sections. And with a Swinty you've got one or two sections like that per box and then another two which are smooth. And then of course a set of runners to go with them. So if you were thinking Swinty or these manufacturers they ship out uh, the highs already in boxes for suppliers. Trust me they don't. They come on one big pallet and everything is loose and it's our job assemble them all into hives and then ship them out and just when you think I've got enough storage in there and the back shed plus the container is full that is still not enough space for a modern age online shop so I've got more stuff again in here So, you know, that's my honey warm room. My wheelbarrow, the kids quad. And we've got cardboard boxes here. Three pallets worth of that size. Some overstock in there. Feeders. And these metal lids which are great with anything when you ship in stuff you've got to find boxes to fit and we're quite lucky we found a company and they sell used single used cardboard boxes and it just so happens to be that that one is perfect for Swinty Hives so always try and save whenever we can. If you can pass the saving on to our customers by us using second hand boxes instead of brand new ones, if we can keep the postage price down because of that, then that is a good practice all round. So this is the shed where we put the parcels in. Got pallets right down and sometimes it's all the way up to there, sometimes it's just a little corner. And that's the Royal Mail clutch point, they gotta scan that when they come in. And it's pretty good and easy because it suits us. So we can put the parcels in there and say I gotta go on the bees and no one's gonna be here. We can shut the gate, there's a camera on the shed there so we can see who's coming in and going out and the couriers can just reverse up to the door they know where their parcels are and they just collect it and with the security 
we can keep an eye on everything and um, that does work out fantastic but more often than not now someone is here all the time especially uh, the business is more than just me and Alan now we've got SS as well uh, someone is here pretty much all the time so um, but we just stuck with the old system of putting all the parcels in there well that's the packing done unfortunately DPG came a bit early so all of it didn't get out today we try our best to get stuff out straight away for next day sometimes we do fail um, the time DPD turns up is out of our control so believe it or not it is January and my next job is finish extracting honey I know so here I am unfortunately still extracting honey now I've got about 60 boxes left to do and luckily crystallization hasn't affected me too bad yet uh, there's a few boxes that I just uh, cut out because they've gone hard but touch wood most of them are fine and they, they are extracting out even though it is taking a while to get them out but the warm room is on this room is heated when I'm in here we are getting through it so we are literally at the end of that now you know extracting this time of year i mean nobody should be doing it um it's just the we're in a small room as you can see and if you wanted to see a video in depth of how i extract honey click the link there to watch that video this room is very small so we can't jar and extract at the same time it's going to be one or the other uh, we jarred a lot of honey up to christmas and i tied up a lot of my time so i couldn't really extract uh, at the speed and at the pace that i wanted to so extracting had to be put on the back burner for me to get those jars out into shops because obviously that's what pays the bills um but i've never been extracting honey this late before um probably down to the fact that i got more bees uh it was a a record year crop wise as well um that on top of how many jars we sold that just held me up but I was talking to a friend of mine this morning and he hasn't finished extracting honey as well. So that does make me feel a little bit better. So let's see if this frame is crystallized or not. very nice now what you will notice is i'm down to the fork now this year's honey crop i uncap with my thomas uncapper and i use an electric knife as well that's how i've been extracting honey but i broke my electric knife this year so the cables came out of it so I'm hoping I'm hoping that can be repaired but who knows we'll see um, but I've washed down before Christmas I washed down pretty much everything in here for the Christmas break I washed down the Thomas and Kappa but I'm not gonna get that dirty for 60 boxes so I have resolved to use in the Swanky and Kappa which we sell in the shop and it is a pretty good one it is one of the best uncappers i view so let's see how easy this is that's okay that will spin out no problem right i'm gonna be in here for a few more hours then I gotta pick the kids up. We're back from the school run on a monday they stay in what's called clubs so it's like a club after school so they're there a bit later gives us a chance to crack on with some more work 
and we need logs in the house. Here we are in the log store. And in the uh, prime possession in the log store, my kindling cracker king. Click the link below to watch that video. That is a fantastic piece of kit. You got a full basket of logs back in the house. Back outside, I check the sheep again. I don't think that thing's gonna lamb for a while, so I'll probably put these sheep out over the next few days, keep eye on the weather. It is promising a lot of rain tomorrow, so I just like to make sure that the main rain has gone before they go back out. But nonetheless, we've just had food and it's time to check the sheep again. Ah, they are so jealous of each other. Can't stroke out one without the other one going clean off. Well, that's it for this video. It is seven o'clock. The kids have just gone to bed and I need to catch on with some emails. I normally do emails uh, at this time of day. That's when I do my personal emails. Emails directed towards me uh, and Hala does emails throughout the day but if anything uh, that I need to do I tend to do it at this time of day and it's at roughly this time of day that I do the YouTube work, the social media work, uh, try and catch up with comments, uh, sort out posts for the week. I tend to do that at this time of day when it's a bit more peaceful and quiet. I try when the kids come back from school to stop work there spend some time with them, have food with them, send them to bed and then maybe get a couple more hours in. That's how we tend to do it here. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, this is the first one of uh, hopefully many and definitely planning to win uh, one of these videos every month this year. Uh, a day in the life of a beekeeper or a day in the life of a bee farmer or a honey farm, beekeeping entrepreneur. I'm not really sure what to call it yet. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do one of these every month. Let me know in the comments, did you like this video? Would you like me to change the format or would you like me to add any more uh, features or, or information into the video on these uh, day in, in the life video? Uh, let me know in the comments, it's the only way uh, I get some feedback and learn how to prove uh, my YouTube video.
Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.